Okay, thank you, and uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. So my position is medical therapy first, and it looks like at least half the audience agrees with me. And this is a patient with severe Crohn's and a stricture and proximal dilation. So what do you do in this setting? So first of all, what's your goal? So you want to achieve remission. You want to have endoscopic and radiologic improvement. You want to improve their symptoms. You don't want them to have pain and obstructive symptoms. You want to avoid surgery, and you want to spare small bowel as much as you can. Remember, all patients are not the same. And this is where I think between the surgeons and the endoscopists and the luminal therapists, uh, we all agree. Uh, not everyone's the same. So in the patient with inflammation and stricture, are they naive to biologic therapy or have they failed it? Do they respond to steroids, suggesting that there is a reversible component to their stricture? And if there is a stricture, how much small bowel is involved? Is it 20 centimeters of stricture or 5 centimeters of stricture and 15 centimeters of inflammation? Is there a prestenotic fistula? Uh, these are all things to consider when you wonder what to do with the patient. So do we have any data? Does anti-TNF therapy make strictures worse, or does it make it better, or do we not know? So uh, this study, and I hope you can read this, is from Gary Lichtenstein, and it says that, and it looked at anti-TNF therapy and found that it did not make it worse. They looked at the treat registry where they looked at strictures and obstructions, and they found that in a multivariate analysis, the use of infliximab was not associated with an increase in stricture development. Remember the, when infliximab first came out, there was this whole theory that it heals so rapidly that it's going to stricture or stenose, and if you already have a stricture, it's going to make it worse. And at least per the treat registry, you didn't really see that. You did see that Crohn's severity, Crohn's duration, ileal disease, and new steroid use was associated with an increase in strictures. Now, they also looked at Accent 1, the um, infliximab in Crohn's trial, and they found that there was no increase in strictures or obstructions on infliximab maintenance therapy versus episodic therapy, despite a higher median infliximab dose in the maintenance group. And they also found that there was no increase in stricture development with rapid mucosal healing at week 10. So uh, though there was that one case report from, I think, from Rutgers Group that showed that there was a stricture in a patient that they treated, in a large registry, which was TREAT, and a large clinical trial, which was Accent 1, they did not see a worsening or increase in the amount of stricture and obstruction based on infliximab therapy. So then the flip side, does anti-TNF therapy improve strictures? And you're going to laugh at the data because I have a study on 11 patients, and this was from Z Gastroenterology, and the next one's from Acta Belgica. And I have to say, I only was able to look at the abstracts because I wasn't able to read the language of the actual paper, and that's how little data we have. So here, um, this was a retrospective analysis, and of 21 patients they treated with infliximab, 11 had inflammatory stenoses, and nine responded well and became completely asymptomatic. So nine out of 11 patients responded. The next study, even better, six patients. So six patients with documented and symptomatic small bowel strictures, and in this, two of the patients completed eight, the eight-week study and had a positive response to infliximab. Now, we get a little bit bigger with this study from Pelletier in elementary pharmacology. They looked at 18 patients, and this was retrospective. And before infliximab, they had 18 patients with what they called complete obstruction or intermittent chronic abdominal pain. And they found that at week eight, 10 had complete response, seven partial, and one failed. And at a median of 18-month follow-up, eight patients were still on maintenance therapy and um, there were only three failures. So at least here, there's some anecdotal evidence that anti-TNF will help. Um, this, uh, this study comes from a little place in the Midwest you could have, may have heard of called the Cleveland Clinic, where uh, they looked at biologics retrospectively in 226 patients with stricture and Crohn's disease that had a CT enterography or MR enterography. And they found that 49% of patients went to surgery within a median of one year. Knowing it's Cleveland Clinic, I'm surprised that they only got 49% of them. Uh, so they looked at a development 
fundamental uh, simplified stricture severity score. And they tried to develop a score and tried to look at factors such as internal fistula, small bowel obstruction, uh, proximal dilation, abdominal mass or abscess, and mesenteric stranding, and saw if they could predict who was going to respond to um, biologic therapy. And they actually found that biologics can reduce this risk of surgery by up to 44% in stricturing Crohn's disease. So this is our largest study, 226 patients. And um, they found that there, they did endoscopic dilation in 50 of those patients and found that it had no impact on um, therapy. It didn't improve. Uh, the benefit of biologics was more pronounced in patients with low risk enterographic findings. So again, you need to choose your patient properly. But in this large series uh, from Bo Shen's group at the Cleveland Clinic, they did find that biologics help um, more so in patients who had less complicated radiologic findings. They did find that endoscopic dilation was not helpful. Uh, so, going back to our approach, you want to individualize your patient. Use your common sense. If your patient is naive to biologic therapy and they have inflammation and a stricture, this is someone that you could try biologic therapy on first. However, if this patient has failed biologic therapy, then it would be appropriate to send them to the surgeon. If they respond to steroids, then yes, I would consider biologic therapy in this patient because it suggests that there's a reversible component to their stricture. It's not all stenotic. There's some inflammatory component. The other important thing is how much small bowel is involved and how much is strictured. So if you have a long segment of inflammation and not all of it's strictured, I would use biologic therapy because I would want to try to heal as much of the inflammation as possible and see if there's a reversible <coughs> excuse me, reversible component to that stricture. Because then even if the stricture doesn't reverse, when you send the patient to the surgeon, they have less small bowel to remove. If they have a short stenotic stricture with minimal inflammation, that patient's probably better off with surgery, and I would agree to send them for that one. Uh, if the patient has a pre-stenotic fistula, then we always, always worry that you give them a biologic, that fistula is a vent, you close the vent, and they become obstructed. So you have to be careful in that patient population. But again, if there's a lot of inflammation and a reversible component to that stricture, I would consider giving them biologic therapy. So in conclusion, I would say in a patient with severe Crohn's disease, an ileal stricture, and proximal dilation on a CT enterography, they should have medical therapy first to prevent unnecessary surgery. If they do need surgery, to minimize the loss of small bowel um, before you send them to surgery so you have less to take out. And I'd say that endoscopic dilation in the setting of inflammation or a non-anastomotic stricture is unlikely to be durable. Thank you. <laughs>